everyone, Matt Pat here. First of all, Happy New Year. You're listening to Like and Describe, YouTube's first official trends podcast. Each episode, we go on a journey to find the little known stories behind YouTube's biggest trends. But I just couldn't miss the chance to talk about the biggest trends of the entirety of last year. So instead of just diving deep into one specific trend, we're going to be kicking off the new year by talking about the top videos and creators in all of 2022, as well as my predictions for the year ahead. I'm going to be joined by two very special guests whose literal job it is to study trends on YouTube. Kevin Alaka is YouTube's global director of culture and trends. He's been at YouTube since 2010, when he originated the company's culture and trends function. Maddie Buxton has been a culture and trends manager at YouTube since 2018. Before that, she was a tech writer and editor at Refinery29. We're going to dig into YouTube's year-end U.S. Top 10 lists from 2022 and geek out about everything from comfort creators and cozy gaming to the future of AI-generated content. But before we get into the conversation, let me give you a quick overview of the Top 10 lists. Every year, YouTube puts out a number of different Top 10 lists across some 40 different countries. Top trending videos, top creators, breakout creators, top shorts, and top music videos. Today, we're going to focus on the U.S. lists. If you haven't seen them yet, check out the links in our show notes and youtube.com slash trends. On the top trending videos list, a few highlights are the Will Smith face slap and Minecraft creator Dream's face reveal. And one of my favorites on that top trending videos list is the backroom's found footage from teenage creator Kane Pixels. That one takes place in a surreal analog horror world. Topping the list of top creators is longtime YouTuber Mr. Beast, which isn't really a surprise when one of your videos was recreating Willy Wonka's chocolate factory in real life. 2022 was the year where we saw a big changing of the guard in the creator space, as Mr. Beast surged to become the number one most subscribed individual creator. Other creators on the list were Ryan Trahan, spurred by his one-man quest to legitimize the penny, as well as Arak, with his promises of delivering his fans the world's largest pizza party. Meanwhile, over in the world of short-form video, the top shorts list included a video from Brody the Dude about shaving his fluffy dog, as well as a trick shot from Chris Ivan, where he tries to hit a super high restaurant sign with a plunger. In general, this was a year of change. Long-term creators started upping the scale of their videos and businesses, all while a new generation of creators started to find their unique voices with shorts. And now, to dive in a little bit deeper, here's my conversation with Kevin and Maddie. Well, Kevin and Maddie, welcome to the show. Thanks, so happy to be here. I'm excited to get into it with you, Matt. Now, before we hop into the lists themselves, I wanted to get your general thoughts on is it possible for videos to go viral anymore? Is that even a relevant term? It's so interesting because I think that the definition of the way that we used to use the word viral, right, which is like this one video that breaks out and everybody sees it and they're all sharing it, like that doesn't happen in the same way that it used to. I mean, first of all, the internet's just like usage has grown so much. And so it's a lot harder to like really break through in the way that we think about, you know, what does the fox say? But a lot of the trends that kind of have that that viral kind of texture that we think about are these broader phenomena where you're seeing lots of different people participating in something that is kind of similar in some way. How about you, Maddie? Any thoughts on what going viral in 2022, 2023 looks like? I think that going viral nowadays is a little bit more intentional and less random maybe than it was in the past. Even if you look at today's top trending videos and you look at Dream's face reveal, which maybe in some context could be considered going viral, that was something that he had announced ahead of time that everyone knew was coming. It wasn't just this this moment that showed up on the internet and everyone was amazed and suddenly sharing it out of the blue. I mean, the internet just in general is a lot less monocultural than it used to be, right? So like, it, you know, there are things that go viral in different communities and different parts of the internet. And you have fewer of those like single things where everybody remembers seeing the same exact video or moment. 
Well, and for that reason, I'm really excited to get into some international questions and and some of the things that you're seeing in in different territories. But before we get to that, let's actually start off with the U.S. lists that just came out not too long ago. So for me, I look at the backrooms found footage by Kane Pixels, and that to me has been a very important video for creating this weird, surreal analog horror world, and then inspiring so many other creators to riff on that, whereas things like the Will Smith slap or the Dream Face reveal feel like one-off trending videos that then prompt a lot of people to comment on it, parody it, things like that. I'd be curious, are there any ones that stand out to you as particularly indicative of, you know, the internet video culture in 2022? I mean, I love that Backrooms video. I remember researching that at the beginning of the year and I was so excited about it. And also, I mean, the Backrooms is not a new trend by any means. We started to see use of that rising in 2019, but it was this one video that really kicked off this whole new interest in it and just goes to show you how one video can be representative of a much larger trend. And just for the sake of anyone who hasn't seen that video, obviously they can go and check out the top trending lists that you guys put out a couple weeks ago, but can you just describe briefly what that video entails? Yes, that video is based on this internet piece of lore, legend about the back rooms, and it's a piece of of sound footage. It has these analog media effects, like a, a glitchy VHS tape, And it has some slightly scary moments, but nothing too uh, horrifying. It's funny because Maddie often will be asked to go and talk about these lists on morning TV shows. And it used to be like, oh, like, what does the fox say? You guys know that song. And now it's like, (laughs) the back rooms is an anxiety inducing, like, (laughs) you know, like. (laughs) Yeah, it's gotten gotten a little more complex over the years. (laughs) The videos that we're seeing are, in a way, a lot harder to describe because they have this whole history on the internet that if you speak the language of the internet and you're clued into how all these different things are connecting across different platforms, you know what they are. But if you're someone coming in cold, sometimes it can be a bit harder to just understand why this seemingly random video is at the top of the top trending videos of the year list. Yeah, actually, when I saw that video on the list, I was so excited for Kane, but also so thrilled that a small, independent, single creator was able to conquer the list in a lot of ways, right? You look at this top 10 list of trending videos from 2022, and you see a lot of things that, you know, you would probably expect, right? The Will Smith slap. I think that is about as mainstream as mainstream can get, right? Or established creators like Mark Rober, Mr. Beast, people who have been on the platform for a while have become synonymous with a lot of these big viral videos. But then all of a sudden, here's Kane Pixel's Backrooms. It shows that it still can be done despite the monoculture of the internet no longer existing, there is still a a chance to kind of capture everyone's imagination and find that niche that just gets everyone excited to talk about, you know, this original creation. Yeah, absolutely. And we see that on the top creators and breakout creators list too, in that a lot of this year's breakout creators are also on the top creators list. Whereas in the past, they were pretty different lists. Sometimes we would see one or two crossover, but now... We're seeing more and more new creators break through to that kind of upper echelon of the top creator list. And actually, I'd love to get your take on that dichotomy, both Kevin and Maddie, the difference between creator-led, creator-made content versus stuff like the Will Smith slap at the Oscars. You know, obviously, one is something that has to be very delicately defined to Good Morning America. The other one is like, oh, you've seen this happen in real time. You've seen the clip multiple times. And it's fascinating to see a list where both of those things exist at the same time. Yeah, the interesting thing here is that a lot of these moments actually have an unseen sort of conversation that drives their popularity that is built around different communities that exist on the internet. Like you look at the slap and and you think about that as this kind of like, oh, everybody saw that one moment. But part of the reason that it, it broke through so much is that there were so many simultaneous conversations happening among different people and different groups around what that moment actually meant. You know, even when you look at the 
the back rooms video that wasn't a video that people just watched and, and moved away from. It was the start of a, an entire lore that people like wanted to literally like be a part of in some way. These videos are not just things you watch. They're things that you have some broader engagement with and that you want to discuss and that you want to unpack and that you want to you know go beyond this sort of standard viewing experience. Mm -hmm. And Kevin, as someone who has founded this team and has been researching this stuff for as long as you have, have you noticed changes or an evolution to how these lists look, you know, from the days of what does the fox say Gangnam style to nowadays with the slap in the back rooms? Have there been different percentages of creator made videos versus kind of more mainstream stuff? Like what sort of things are you seeing that might look different or, or have persisted over the last decade? You can kind of see the evolution of YouTube in the evolution of these lists in a way. I remember the first one that I worked on was in, in 2010. And it was kind of a mix of, I think, these user-generated viral videos, these one-off viral videos, and major media moments like, you know, late-night show clips and stuff, right? And then over time, a couple things happened. One is you started to see fewer of those kind of viral videos, and you started to see more YouTube creators creating major media moments, essentially. You know, some years it's like, okay, these are all very popular videos, but there's no real thread between these things. And then some years like this year where you really see, oh, wow, there's like some really interesting phenomena happening that are all reflected on this list. Right. Well, you know what the follow-up question has to be. In your answer, you mentioned that there is a common thread that you see across these top trending videos. What's the story here? All of these top trending videos involve online communities in some way. So, for example, we see personal stories showing up really prominently from Dream with his face reveal or Jaden Animations with their coming out video. Let's get into it. I've come to realize that I'm Arrow Ace, which stands for Aromantic Asexual. Then you have these more traditional celebrity moments like the Will Smith slap, where they're becoming more important and gaining increasing notoriety because of the way that communities interact with them once they're shared online. Now, we've talked a little bit about how these lists have changed over the years. Obviously, the world underwent a massive change with COVID, dealing with mental health as you're kind of trapped in solitary confinement for a, an extended period of time. Has that impacted the trends list over the last several years from your perspective? The pandemic had a couple of unexpected impacts. Like one of them is that video became a lot more of a common experience in people's lives. Like 80% of people have posted video content online. Like that is a stat that would have been unthinkable to me just a few years ago, but is now a, a truth, right? I think also the way that people use video has evolved. Like one of the cool things about YouTube has always been that the audience sort of decides what it's for in a way. That's like explains why ASMR is so popular. Like no TV networks like, oh, we're going to have people whispering on our show tonight. But like when someone decides like, oh, I use this to relax, all of a sudden the content sort of proliferates around that. And so we've seen a lot of people, especially younger people, using YouTube to cope with this like anxiety that we all developed or experienced over these last few years. Like over 80% of younger people say that they use YouTube for soothing content. And we ran the same question a year prior and it was like 10 percentage points up. Can you give some specific examples of soothing content? Yeah, I mean, well, ASMR, I mentioned, obviously, is, is one of those things. And I think a good example that I really loved is Bad Bunny put out all these, like, 360 videos of him, like, just chilling on the beach. And it's, like, this, like, this kind of vibe that he's kind of created that I think is is quite relaxing. I mean, if you look at a lot of the top live streams, like, Lo-Fi Girl is this, right? This kind of, like, calming thing that you can put on to focus, right? And we, there's a lot of these, like, live streams that are really about managing your emotions and stuff. There's also an interesting phenomenon that's related to this called comfort creators, which is where we see people, especially, you know, younger people, they watch their favorite creator because it makes them feel comfortable, right? It is actually relaxing. And don't forget the cozy gaming. I love the cozy gaming. What's cozy gaming? It's very hard to explain, but it's a vibe. It's a vibe <laughs> of playing in these landscapes in a way that's very relaxing and you're not playing to... Uh, you know, achieve any specific end goal to complete a speed run. It's just a more relaxed approach to playing a game. I can definitely attest to using YouTube for a fair amount of soothing content myself. Lo-Fi Girl is a frequent pumping through my uh, headphones as I'm working on scripts throughout the day. So 
That being said, you know, we've talked a lot about what's on these top 10 lists that you've released for the U.S. I'd be curious, what are some high-level differences that you see in some of the international territories where you put out these lists? There actually are a lot of similarities and very common themes. This theme about online communities playing an important role holds true across regions. In multiple countries, we have creators sharing personal stories ending up on the top trending videos list. We also see some of the same videos appearing from country to country. For example, Will Smith's slap showed up in Germany in the same way that it showed up here. There are some things that have become more globalized, but there are also things that are very much a part of an individual culture. Yeah, for example, in India, if you look at their top trending videos list, you'll see a lot of comedy and a lot of satire. And in part, that's because that content is not as popular in mainstream media over there. It, it touches on a lot of topics that traditional media would not focus on, for example, street food. Another one that you did release a list on this year was shorts. And I mean, you're seeing a whole new class of creator opening their doors, you know, and, and making content for the first time. I know for me, my shorts feed was really filled with a lot of professionals. So a lot of dentists, a lot of airline attendants, lawyers giving their hot takes in like one minute snippets. I'm curious, from your perspective, how has shorts changed the platform and what sort of things are you seeing over there? I mean, part of what makes like short form so fun and and exciting is that it is like e very democratizing and you can have people who are like, I'm a dentist, I'm a flight attendant, all the things that you just mentioned, and they can create content that people want to hear about because those are all things that have some major bearing in people's lives <laughs> in some way, doctors and flight attendants. And when you find somebody who's really good at explaining what their experience is like, it can be pretty captivating. Yeah, and also going back to what we were saying about feel-good content, if you look at the top shorts list across all of our countries, almost all of the videos are ones that are really intentionally created to elicit some sort of positive emotion. So most of the videos are either some kind of comedy, whether it's you know sketch comedy or, or character-driven comedy, or there are these very visually pleasing stunts and tricks, like Chris Ivan with his toilet plunger trick shots in the US. Dave and Buster's bet me a thousand tickets I couldn't get a plunger on their sign in 10 tries. And with just a little bit of hope, it's time to give it a full send. Oh what? So it's it's really about that feel good content that's rising to the top. So Matt, we have this thing on the Culture and Trends team where we don't make predictions, and part of the reason for that is that we have this like philosophy that the internet evolves so quickly and has so many different variables that it's hard enough to understand what's happening today, let alone predict what's going to happen tomorrow. But, you know, what do you think the future of video is going to look like in <laughs> 2023? <laughs> wow. So it's a softball question. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Can you predict the entire next year's worth of trends? Thanks, Kevin. So uh, first off, we talked about COVID, right? And how COVID and the pandemic really affected people's content tastes. And as the world has opened up, as people are feeling safer again, one of the things I've started to see crest, and I think you'll just see increasing coverage of in the next year, is a resurgence of hotel content and travel content. I rented a $1 million a night hotel room. And I also rented this $1,000 a night cave, this $10,000 a night underwater palace, this $50,000 a night island. Dubai is one of the richest cities in the entire world. And in honor of that, I decided to go all out and book us a room at the only seven star hotel in the world. Where the bubbles are, that's the hotel over there. Obviously, Mr. Beast just did his uh, $1 versus million dollar hotel. But before that, Sophia Nygaard did her I Stayed at an Underwater Hotel. And I think at this point, as people are looking for exciting, interesting vacations to get out of the homes that they've been stuck in for the last couple years, they're going to be turning towards people who are showcasing those sorts of wacky places to visit or things that they can aspire to in the future. I'd also say in the back third of 2022, I would say, uh, you saw this real surge in people talking about AI-generated content. There were a lot of 
image generation softwares that used AI to create images from just a few descriptive words. And I think what you're going to start seeing are more and more creators testing the limits of what these AI programs can do and also starting to discuss the ethics of AI-generated content. Obviously, shorts content is just going to continue to explode on the platform as more and more people become creators. And then last, I think for the last couple years, Mr. Beast has really dominated the cultural conversation on YouTube, you know, because his stunts are one of a kind. The scale of his videos is untouchable. But I think with this year, you've started to see the rise of creators that have learned from Mr. Beast, but taken in the complete opposite direction. Instead, you have the Ryan Trahans of the world who, instead of, you know, giving away a million dollars or a plane for the last person who completes the challenge, you have Ryan Trahan trying to live off of a penny a day. This is a penny, and I'm gonna use it to cross America in the next 30 days. Here's the rules. Rule number one, all profit must come from the penny. Hey y'all, can anyone sell me a pen for this penny? So it's, it's the complete opposite end of these extreme challenges, these extreme stunts. And so I think you're going to have a generation of creators like Eric, like Ryan Trahan, who take the learnings of Mr. Beast and, and really how to package and sell a video and a grand concept, but translate it into a smaller scale or something that's much more attainable for the everyday creator that then is interesting and exciting in its own way. We've seen people vie for a million dollars, but what's it like to live off of one cent? What's it like to, you know be without a house for an extended period of time? What's it like to, you know, take away all of your resources and still create a compelling, interesting video? How'd I do? You want to come join our team? Yeah. Actually, <laughs> we're going to get back together one year from now and Maddie will tell you if you're correct or not. <laughs> oh, Again, no pressure, no pressure. That's my job application. So, you know, a year from now, you'll have to let me know if yeah. I got the job. It's pretty good, pretty good. Well, Kevin, Maddie, thank you so much for taking time. I I wish we had hours to discuss all of this, but uh, you know, maybe a year from now when we reconvene, I can just become a member of your team and that'll just be my day job at that point. You're welcome anytime, my friend. Thanks so much for having me. And yes, come join the team. I could talk with Kevin and Maddie all day about this stuff. I think Probably my biggest takeaway is just how this space has evolved across the last decade. I mean, when you look at YouTube circa 2012, it was a wild west. People still didn't understand what this ecosystem was or what it meant to go viral. But nowadays, creators are so sophisticated that they can literally design moments to go viral in their sleep. When you think about it from the user side, the viewer, we're figuring out new ways to incorporate digital video into our lives each and every day. I'm constantly listening to that soothing content that Kevin mentioned earlier. Every day, Lo-Fi Girl is right there on my desktop playing in the background while I'm working on a new script. And I'm sure it's the same for you as you're studying for a test or trying to get through the workday. So where does digital video head here in 2023? I cannot wait to find out. Thanks for listening to episode two of Like and Describe, YouTube's first official trends podcast. I'm Matt Pat. You can find links to the US top 10 lists we discussed in the show notes, as well as youtube.com slash trends. Find out more at yt.be slash like describe. That's yt.be slash like describe. Like and Describe is produced by Chris DeCesar, Brian Farnham, Rachel Pena, Amanda Olszewski, and Emily Shaw. This episode was edited by Emily Shaw and Zach McNeese, and mixed by Zach McNeese as well. Special thanks to Kevin Alaka and Maddie Buxton. Our theme song is by Megan Begala. I'll see you next time. <laughs>